What's going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got some more NBA news to of course be talking about with you guys. Some pretty interesting news that I honestly didn't think I'd really be covering. But honestly, I'm, I'm pretty happy to be doing this. And that is it's currently being reported that Brandon Knight has officially signed with the New York Knicks. And this is all being reported by Mark Spears. Now I'm pretty happy about this because... Brandon Knight is a dude I think a lot of people should be looking up to. And you might be like, well, why should, why should we look up to Brandon Knight? And the reason we should look up to Brandon Knight is because this dude has had some of the most low lights in NBA history, whether it's being dunked on, crossed over, just anything you can think of. Brandon Knight, it's probably been happened to him, right? It, it, that's one of the issues with Brandon Knight. The thing is, no matter what, has happened to this guy, he's still in the NBA and he's back at it. Like, this guy was touted to have one of the worst contracts in the NBA, of course. He kind of got flipped around multiple times, whether that was to, you know, when he, I think he was at the Houston Rockets he got flipped to at one stage. They thought, you know, maybe there was a chance they could revive his career and he could come a, a you know, really good part in their small ball lineup. It didn't happen. They ended up trading him off to the Cleveland Cavaliers where the Cavs were bad back then a couple years ago. And they're still bad now. But they were even worse back then. And they were looking to take on a bunch of contracts and all this stuff to get picks. They took on Brandon Knight's $18 million contract before I believe it was like a year later he got traded to the Pistons a part of the Andre Drummond deal. Which again, both teams... I, I wouldn't say both teams lost that. I still feel like the Pistons lost. I mean... All they got back was a second round pick, which was like pick 50 from Remembrance. While the Cavaliers at least got a season or so out of Andre Drummond, where, you know, he didn't really do much, but Darius Garland improved so much with playing with like a, you know, a center that can catch lobs and all that stuff. I actually believe one of the reasons Darius Garland improved so much was he was able to train with a guy like Andre Drummond in the offseason, who was still much better to train with than, you know, like Tristan Thompson or someone like that. Um, plus, Drummond's a pretty good guy at the end of the day and sold a lot of jerseys in Cleveland. Um, so, again, that's just kind of the truth behind the whole Andre Drummond situation there. But Brandon Knight, he played like half a season with the Pistons where they didn't decide to bring him back, which made a whole lot of sense that they decided not to bring him back at the end of the day. I mean, he didn't really do anything for them. But Brandon Knight, one thing that I do remember was before getting traded to the Pistons, Brandon Knight actually showed off with the Cavaliers in preseason. Um, before he actually got to the season, it was pretty bad. And um, again, his playmaking was terrible. He couldn't really work on the court with like Colin Sexton or anything like that because he's a scorer. Um, and Colin Sexton's already a scorer. So again, it just didn't really work out. They opted to play Dalva Dover much more than Brandon Knight. And Brandon Knight was subsequently traded. But again... With the New York Knicks, who don't seem to care if their players are good playmakers really at all. They're just looking for dudes that can ball handle. Like, Derrick Rose is still a decent playmaker, but he's not like, you know, they could probably be looking for a little bit more. Especially, and Kemba Walker as well. Kemba Walker's not the greatest playmaker out there. Um, in fact, he's quite average for a dude that was making $35 million or so at one point. Uh, and then you look at kind of Emmanuel Quickly. He's more of a ball handler, just a score first type dude. And Brandon Knight's kind of the same, so it doesn't look like they really care, which I don't think does, you know, it doesn't, it's not like it doesn't make sense because they did really well without a primary playmaker when it came to, you know, getting to the playoffs and whatnot. So I don't think it really bothers them at all. Plus, Kemba Walker can still playmake here and there, and so can Derek Rose, I suppose. So I guess Brandon Knight, he'll possibly be playing that Emmanuel quickly kind of off ball two role where, you know, Brandon Knight hasn't shown to be the worst defender. I mean, he's had games where he's a good defender, but he's had games where he's a terrible defender. It's really kind of hard to put a put the finger down on where Brandon Knight is going to be, but I do like that they're still, you know, letting Julius Randle have the ball, and they're not going to extremely take that away from him. So I think Julius Randle is still a really good, you know, ball handler and can play mate quite a bit now. It's just, I think, when it comes to the playoffs, it's a, a pretty big issue because... In playoff time, it's kind of like, well, you don't necessarily want Julius Randle who, you know, with every two assists still makes a, you know, kind of turnover, you know, holding the ball predominantly 24-7. So, they will be taken away from him a little bit. I suppose it will be given to, 
you know, uh, of course, other players here and there. I don't think Brandon Knight will really be one of those dudes that gets the ball exactly, you know, too much. I think it will still be mainly in Kemba Walker's hands and Derek Rose's hands to kind of do the, the main stuff with a mix of Emmanuel quickly. To be honest, I don't really know if, um, you know, much of this really comes like a Brandon Knight. Does he really last that long on the roster? I wouldn't say so. I think his time with the Knicks will be limited. I think it will be mainly he'll be on there for a couple of days and they'll probably give him a minute or two at the end of every game they play and then who knows, they'll probably waive him from there. It could be one of those things where it will be like a 10-day a ten day contract when the season starts. So you might get like four or five games. There's no real indication to say what the contract is. Some people are saying it's a one-year contract. Some people are saying it's a one-year no guaranteed. Some people are saying it's a 10-day. I guess we'll still have to see in the upcoming days. When this video comes out, it will probably be revealed by the time of filming just right now. It's still a little bit up in the air. In my opinion, it will probably be like a non-guaranteed one year deal that kind of acts like a 10 day contract because he'll kind of just be on the roster and if they don't like him after like the first five games or something like that they'll probably waive him which is most likely what's going to happen what Brandon Knight's kind of spoken about though is not necessarily being super dominant on the court but being a great leader and mentor and maybe that's what they're you know kind of bringing him in to do you know the Knicks still have quite a few young, you know, guys here and there. So maybe he just comes in and helps out Emmanuel quickly, you know, shows Emmanuel quickly some stuff, which I think could definitely happen. Um, you know, they, they also brought in Miles McBride, who's a, a point guard. He might teach him some stuff. Quinton Grimes as well. They also brought in, who'll be more of like an acting wing. Uh, he might teach him some stuff. And even like, he could probably teach Obi Toppin some stuff. Like Obi Toppin is a power forward, yes, but... We've seen that in college, Obi Toppin was actually a really good ball handler. And in the NBA, he just seems to be very rusty with it. I think Brandon Knight might teach him maybe some stuff on how to act, um, you know, with the ball and what to do and this and that. Um, and even maybe some off-ball stuff. You know, Brandon Knight's had a bit of off-ball, you know, knowledge here and there. Um, but the thing is, too, that I'd like to see um, is maybe if Brandon Knight doesn't necessarily work out, maybe he looks to you know, have some kind of coaching role. Who knows? Maybe he does like a uh, a role where maybe he plays for the G League team um, and then, you know, learn, you know, coaches in there or something like that. Or maybe he just comes straight into the Knicks coaching staff. You know, just as like a player development type guy. I'm not exactly too sure, but I feel like there is a lot for Brandon Knight to, you know, kind of do with this team. And he's, you know, he said before he's a great locker room dude. I mean, if Jared Dudley can get a contract on a good team, why can't Brandon Knight... I know the Knicks have, like, f five or six guards at this point, but it's not like Quinton Grimes probably can't slot in as a small ball, small forward. You know, you look at um, Emmanuel quickly, he probably could as well. And because the Knicks' defense is, like, so elite, and they're such a good, like, got such a good def uh, defensive system proficiency, jeez, I wouldn't even be surprised if they went real, real small ball this year and you know probably rolled some small forward at like the powerful position here and there like i'm not saying it'd be like for a long time but i wouldn't be surprised if a bloke like you know alec burks or someone played a bit of small ball power forward for like four minutes or something just to see you know how it maybe goes i'm not saying it will happen but hey if the knicks wanted to go a little bit smaller they've brought in a lot of guards and a lot of forwards maybe that's what they're looking to do to run a little bit of more of a small ball lineup and hey even RJ Barrett, who's a really, really good defender now, it seems like he'll be probably guarding the small form forward permanently this year. Maybe he even learns to, you know, do some small ball power forward type stuff. He's about 198 centimeters, six foot five, but he just seems taller. Like he seems six foot six, six foot seven, and we've seen him switch on to power forwards before and actually do decent. So, hey, I don't know. Maybe this is an idea. I don't think it will happen. I'm just saying maybe it could happen. Uh, it would be a pretty interesting thing to see him go small ball, though. But hey, they've also got a, they've got just an insane amount of depth. This New York Knicks team as well. Even Kevin Knox, maybe he learned some stuff off Brandon Knight as well. Um, but of course, I would very much like to hear all of your thoughts and opinions on this down below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for all the latest, you know, NBA content and NBA news. Of course, don't forget. 
to go ahead and, you know, subscribe to my gaming channel, MIRO slash Long Challenge, and check out my podcast as well if you haven't already, which I will be all linking in the description down below. But as I saw, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Through the wastelands, through the highways, and the